Alrighty. Hello everybody, Steve Wagon here, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. It has been a while since I recorded any of these, and it's been a while since I've even posted on there. I do apologize. I've been in the middle of something, as you can see. Things look kind of different. Um, yeah. I moved recently, things are starting to settle down now, and I'm getting back into the swing of recording all this. Now, last we left off, we had a little date with our good fr with our good friend, uh, a vampire dude, I don't remember his name. But now, now we are having a lovely date with Brian. I remember his name because it was very... Damien. His name was Damien. <laughs> vampire dude. But now we're having a little golf time with Brian, and we are kicking ass. Let's just jump right back into this, shall we? Amanda walks over and tees up for a particularly hard windmill hole. <gasps> Gripping her club, she winds up and launches the ball into the parking lot. She looks me right in the eye and does an exaggerated shrug. Hmm. Oops. <laughs> I disagree with her actions, but I appreciate her act of youthful defiance. She walks over and pats me on the back. Oh wait, we lost, didn't we? Son of a bitch. <laughs> that was for your own a good. Love you, kiddo. Oh, oh, we're back into the soul. Oh hell yeah, okay. And Damn it. Damn it. You lost your ball. I don't I and now. Son of a bitch, no. <gasps> come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Amen, seek no pass. Sh sh shut up, pirate man. How did I miss? How did I miss that one? I was right on it. No, no, I swear, I'm good. Oh, that one, that one was just bad. Oh, God, I'm choking. Oh, no, I'm choking. Oh, no. And now. Okay, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Because I don't know how to make it slow. How to? Hmm. You think you're gonna fool me? Okay. Oh, this is this is just unfair. That's just some bullshit. Oh. oh, I'm getting this one 100%. I hate this game. <laughs> no! B, I was supposed to be awesome. Ah. Uh. God damn it. I try to maintain an air of professionalism because there are children present. But I can feel the crushing weight of the force of the four dads before me, casting a disappointed look upon my broken frame. I have failed you, fathers, and for that, I am sorry. Hey. Man, that was some good show, my stave. I fought valiantly. My only regret was being bested. I have lost, lost at putt putt. Mini golf is beneath me. <laughs> I have lost loss at putt putt. Ooh. I'm sorry, sorry. Amanda groans. Yes. Arr, Daisy, did you have a good time? Yo ho ho, I did. <laughs> oh, we aren't even, we haven't even found the buried treasure yet. I think we would need to apply for a permit to dig around here. <laughs> I can take Daisy home so we can get to the city paperwork started for digging. You two enjoy your nights. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Stay, if you're cool with that. Uh, sure. Just don't get yourselves into too much trouble. Nah. I can do. I'll make sure we get into a perfectly reasonable amount of trouble. Amanda and Daisy skip away, yelling about buried treasure. 
bless that kid's tiny rebellious heart. Oh. Well, I think... I think we should hit the bar now. Ah. There's actually a tiki bar attached to this place. How about that? That sounds like a plan, Stan. My name's Brian. You know what I mean. I uh, guess I'm spending more time with Brian, which I'm not jazzed about considering. Considering I just completely blew it on the putt-putt course. Okay, Dad, you can do this. Just gotta drown my sorrows in some tropical loser drink and get out of here. Brian and I walk into the freaky tiki, a kitschy, a kitschy island theme bar. Palm trees adorn the walls and several fake parrots are strewn about. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Brian and I approach the bamboo bar. <laughs> Two pineapples of hospitality, please. The bartender whips up two rum drinks inside of hollowed out pineapples. He sets them on fire, and we have to blow them out before we can drink them. Usually I just like to, I don't know, drink my drinks. Ah. If you don't want yours, I'll take it. And best me again? <laughs> I think not, Brian. I take a sip of my pineapple of hospitality. Sorrow tastes fruitful. Well... Fruity. My lord care needs a very partic My lord care needs are very particular. I hope you're up for the challenge. Oh damn it, I forgot I have to mow his lawn. Oh don't worry. I'll bring my own salt to promote healthy growth. A sustainable environment. Hey. Oh, come on now, Stafe. I'm just having a little fun with you. I grumble and sip more of my fruity sorrow drink. Fine, fine. You got me on this one. While I sip more of my drink, I notice a TV in the corner. Hey, Extreme Makeover Deck Edition is on. I love this show. Always made me want to own a deck. Ugh, oh, I hate this show. Really? Why? I thought your, like, first date great idea was to build a deck. Why? It's so clearly fake. Well, yeah. It's reality TV. Who cares? I care. I'm a general contractor. I work with decks all the time. There's no way they're renovating those decks in a matter of two days. It's impossible. That is a three-week job. Minimum. So you want them to cover those three weeks extensively in every episode? It can't be that interesting to watch a bunch of dudes slave over a deck for that long. Nobody would watch it. Aww. I don't like any of those open probate shows. I want to watch stuff that's real. Like long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. Oh. I have terrible news for you, Steve. No, 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 it's impossible. No, no, not them two. No, no, oh god, no. <laughs> they got everyone, man. They got everyone. Well, that's the awful truth. <laughs> not the ghosts, though. Those are real. Oh, thank god. Trucks just don't have a mercy escape. But I've been lied to for so long, oh no. We both chuckle and sip on our pineapples. So wait, you're a general contractor. You know, I'm starting to think to myself, what the hell do I do for a living? What's my job? Because we have Hugo, that's a, a teacher. Brian is a general contractor. I kind of forget what Damien does for a living. He does some rich guy crap. We still don't know what the other dads do. <sighs> what the hell do I do? I, I don't know. <laughs> sure am. I actually help fly on the cul-de-sac we live in. <laughs> wow, nice work. <laughs> it looks fine. 
Yeah. Kind of took after the footsteps of my old man. He was a general contractor, too? Well, best. He practically built half of this town with his bare hands. It's weird how you spend your whole life trying to not become your father. Then you wake up one day, and there you are. Hey. But I get to work with my hands, and it pays more than enough to take care of my daughter. And it's an absolute dream job, for me at least. Hmm, well, that's impressive. Building stuff has always been my weak point as a dad. <sighs> And I've been okay with that. Until now. Now I must defeat him. I do have that patio furniture that I haven't put together. Still sitting in the garage. Okay, okay. Maybe I should cool it with the dad competition. Gotta keep it light. Oh, one of your classic dad... Classic jokes. Ask about his daughter. Stare him down. Unblinkingly. This is quite creepy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, would you like to hear a joke? I think you're more of a jokey dad. So, a three-legged dog walks into a bar. Uh-huh. And he goes up to the bartender and says, I'm looking for the man who shot my leg. Dot, dot, dot. Is that how it goes? Nope, but I refuse to admit it. Uh, yes. It's one of those anti-jokes. It's very avant-garde, you know. Oh, so it's supposed to not be funny. How dare you. Sure. I take a long sip of my drink. I see. We can't keep things friendly here. This is perfectly pleasant. <laughs> I could do this all night. Because I feel an innate need to impress Brian and prove I'm better than him, obviously. That's the only reason, I think. Let's keep it moving, shall we? I ask about his dog. Flying about kids these days, compliments his beard. If there's, one, if there's one thing that'll get you to the heart of another man... Your beard is nice. It looks very healthy. <laughs> Thanks. I grew it myself. Hey, you're not allowed to dad joke another dad. Oh. Is this how our daughters feel all the time? I'm upset. Ah. <laughs> I upset. I'm dead. He's got me twice. That's two for two. No! No! Hey. I mean, you walked right into that one. That's Dad Joke 101. Listen, buddy. I took Dad Joke 101 years ago. I'm in the 400 level classes, and well on my way to a degree in art humor. Hey. Wow. Amanda must be proud. She is not. I look around the room and take in all the kitschy decor, looking for something else to comment on. There's a gigantic fish hanging above Brian and I. I gesture to it. Cool fish. It's definitely fake. Well, really? No. No, not the fish as well. Uh. Everything in here is fake. That palm tree over there is just a ficus with plastic coconuts glued to it. No. I look over. He's right. But I almost caught something. Like that fish once. Mine was Baker, though. Oh, really? Of course it was. No, oh, really? Yep. Now I went on a trip to Hawaii. Maybe a decade ago. We were out at the sea for three days. Catching fish, drinking beer, you know? Great guy stuff. We had a hot plate on the boat so we could shear the fish right after we caught it. Throw a little bit of salt and lemon on there, old man. That's some of the best food I ever had. That actually sounds amazing. Oh my god, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> well, it was the last day. Everyone had gone to bed already. But I was out there watching the stars. Had my line out too. 
Then all of a sudden, I just started running. <laughs> it just started running. So I jumped on the reel before he gets ripped out of the rod rack and starts fighting with the damn thing. I'm out there for maybe an hour and call out to my shipmates. It's just me against nature. Finally, I'm starting to tuck the guy out. I got him onto the shellfish and finally get a shot of it. The biggest marlin I've ever seen. Hemingway esque. Hemingway esque. I get it onto the boat single handedly. <laughs> and you know what happens next? What happens next? Tell me. Oh, the damn thing smacks me on the face with its tail, knocks me out. I wake up the next morning on the deck. The fish gone. Never felt dumber. So it got away? I think there's another version of me that I would have spent the rest of my life trying to catch that fish, Captain Ahab style. You got knocked out by a fish tail? Now I'm sure Daisy would be supportive. <laughs> oh man, fishing's life. I haven't gone enough lately. You go fishing? Actually, I have a confession to make. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I having this inexplicable urge to be vulnerable with him? I can't tell him that I'm terrible at fishing. I lean in close. I'm amazing at fishing. I'm the best. No one can outfish me. <laughs> I'm amazing at fishing. I'm simply the best out there. Okay, since you're such a pro at fishing, I'm, ta I'm taking you fishing. Do you want to go fishing? Wait, don't answer that. Yes, you do. <laughs> We're going fishing. Oh, no. Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, come on, it'll be a blast. I know the perfect little fishing spot. I'll bring some bears. We can just sit back, relax, and reel in some trout. We'll bring the kids with us. Come on. You know you want to. I sigh. <laughs> I've been cornered. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Brian gives me an exuberant high five. Ah. Oh, yes. Maybe we'll see who can catch the most fish so I can get you mowing my lawn. Try to beat me. But they don't call me Steve good at catching fish wagon for nothing. I am spinning a web of lies that I fear will one day consume me. Hey. Sounds like it'll be a scrap. Brian and I finish our drinks and head outside. Till next time. This is a great opportunity for friendship. I'm real excited. <laughs> Kiss my best, Brian. <laughs> And also for catching more fish than Brian. Your krill I'm able to sponge, Stave. Mullet's over. You'll come around to the fish-related dad jokes in no time. Brian extends his hand and gives me a friendly but firm handshake. I see that competitive fire in his eyes. This is going to be a whole thing, isn't it? <laughs> Once Brian takes over babysitting duties, Amanda walks home with me. She immediately plops down on the couch and flips on the TV. So, how was your hang with Brian? It was... Hmm, okay. Oh yeah, he seems like a neat dude. I think, I think so. I don't know. The guy lo just loves a good competition. But then, again, but then again, apparently so do I. What did you and Daisy end up doing? Oh, we hunted for treasure for a bit, but Daisy was really adamant about not digging without a permit. So, we just watched some documentary about theoretical physics. I put her to bed and then sat down eating Brian's food. Huh. Don't tell him I said that. That's standard babysitting protocol, I believe. I really like hanging out with Daisy. She's super mature for her age. Yeah. Brian says he has a hard, hard time relating to other. She has a hard time relating to other kids. She kind of reminds me of you at her age. Although she doesn't bite people as much as you do. Huh. 
I can't believe I'm a finally the cool older kid. <laughs> Feels good. You gonna hang out with Brian again? That's the thing. He wants to go fishing with me. Ah. Oh. I told him I was an amazing fisherman. Mm -hmm. You hate fishing. Who hates fishing? Who hates fishing? That is. Steve, listen to me. That that That's a problem you and me are going to have to have a discussion about. I know. I'm kind of panicking. I'm not sure it'll be fine. All you have to do is wake up at the crack of dawn and sit silently in a boat on a lake for hours on end with no promise of a tangible reward. Your only companion being the fear and doubt you harbor deep within your heart. Fishing is the fun you'll remind yourself as the world darkens around you and you wonder if it's really you staring back at yourself in the lake's reflection. It's simply just the abyss. Yeah, laugh it up, Amanda. You're coming with us. Huh. It is my constitutional right to outright refuse this order. Daisy's coming too. Oh, well, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. I bet I could convince Brian to bring his dog. A fine fold. I'm in. Alright, I'm bushed. Gonna call it a night. Don't stay up too late, okay? Oh, you got it, pops. Alright, how'd the steak go? How'd the date go? Come on. Give me that score. Give me that score. Aww. Oh, look at all that. Look at all those dads. <laughs> hey. have done it better myself. Yeah, that's right. We got family vacation, gun, gun safety, bear hugs, beard, mini golf, and pirate are very low, and that makes me sad. But hey, we got rank A. I don't remember what Damien rank was, but I'm pretty sure it was high. Yeah, look Welcome. at us. You've got dads. I've got dads, baby. Ooh. Dad look? Hey, Steve, listen. This is you. This is you from the past. Uh-huh. Whoa. How'd this happen? I figure you're trying to reply to this, because I know myself. But this is an automated message from you earlier this morning, when it was socially acceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that as well. The future is amazing. Listen, life is short, and ice cream should always be acceptable. But unfortunately, this isn't the society we live in. And it's less the society we live in, and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged by others. But you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good, me. I'm buying ice cream. I'm gonna buy that ice cream. You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream, which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. And there's no other way to eat a wonderful thing of ice cream. Give me one second, please. 